Ben Begay, CEO of Chippewa Lumber, lives here at the end of a sleepy cul-de-sac on Smith Street with his wife Kara, the mayor of Evergreen. Each morning, he travels down Semper Verde Boulevard towards his office on Mason Street. Today, while sitting in traffic, Ben's mind began to drift, as it always has, to Marquette Island. Marquette Island sits directly across the strait from Couillard Shores. As a teen, Ben would often sit at the end of Main Street in between the two fishing docks to stare longingly at the island. It was the embodiment of peace, and that peace always drew him towards it. Later that evening, Ben and Kara met Russ Kowalski, one of the major developers of Evergreen, and his wife, Jan, at the Bluebird for a nice evening of ribeye and an old-fashioned, both of which the diner is known for. During dinner, Russ mentions that he's caught wind that the state is planning on selling Marquette Island to raise money for a new state park near Van Buren. Ben is crushed, knowing that this will bring development to the peaceful little island. Sensing this, Russ asks Ben if he'd ever considered purchasing the island himself and developing it. Ben says the only way he'd consider doing this is if motor vehicles were banned from the island, keeping the land peaceful and clean for the wildlife that lives there and the future residents alike. Russ is immediately taken by the idea, having vacationed on the Toronto Islands as a kid. Imagine having a completely car-free community right here in Nicolay Bay. It could be both peaceful and profitable if done right, but you can't develop without transportation. The two approached the county board with the idea of creating a ferry service to the island. Though initially hesitant, Russ presented tables showing his projections for the growth in tax revenue upon development, which convinced two-thirds of the county board members to go along with the idea. And with transportation infrastructure secured, the two put a bid on the island and win it. In today's episode, we're going to lay the foundations for Marquette Island, including the ferry service, as well as the beginnings of a small pedestrian-oriented community. And if you enjoy the idea of a pedestrian-oriented island, please hit the like button. And if you'd prefer an island with some motorized traffic, hit the like button for that too and let me know what you'd prefer by dropping a comment or by leaving one of these emojis. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Marquette Island in Nicolay Bay, or, or at least we will be once we can get there. We need transportation first. This is going to be an exciting build where we build a ferry system and then we build a small community over here, completely pedestrian oriented as far as we can within the constraints of the game. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started with our ferry system and talk a little bit about the game plan. So I think in an ideal world, we would consolidate our ferries over here next to our other shipping assets, but that isn't possible due to some of the spatial constraints that we have. But we've got a great deal of love for Evergreen. This is the county seat. This is where Ben's wife is the mayor, and it would make a lot of sense to have these assets worked in here. The ferry depot would bring jobs and the ferry stop would bring a lot of activity, a lot of pedestrian activity and maybe provide a purpose for all of this roadway capacity that was built many, many years ago. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is pop into transport and then we go into ship. We have both our ferry depot and our ferry stops that we're gonna need. So we'll start out with our depot. It has a lot of noise pollution, so 75. Maybe the, the best idea is to actually place this off to the edge right here, just outside of the noise cone of all of the residential properties here. So just not the most attractive thing in the world, but maybe we can hide this with some landscaping. I'm gonna control H this down to the road here, and then we will connect this up in just a moment. And you might think it's a bit weird that I've added this right here, but the reason why we're doing this is this is an arterial couplet and we don't want to have any more junctions on this road than we have to. So. This is a way to prevent any more junctions than we're already gonna have. We're gonna already do a few things that are gonna be controversial. So let's get started on those. And what I think the controversial thing will be is we're gonna place a ferry stop temporarily right here. And the reason I say temporarily is I think we could use a unique building here as well. So looking at our landmarks, at the very end here, we have a boat museum. This has been a big part of this community's character and history, boating. So I want to add that as well as the ferry here. Now to do this, I think that we need to have some sort of key wall. And I'm gonna go 25 meters and there's a very specific reason for that. I want to have a path here as well if we can. Now through here, we're gonna do some interesting things. So first of all, we have our museum, multiple problems. We'll hit M 
And I just want to line this up nicely with our Brandenburg Gate. So I'm going to pull this all the way over here just to make sure that we're straight. And then we'll pull it back out into the water. I'm going to drop this down. We're going to clean this up and we'll even sever our connection here at our path. Now I can delete that here. And rather than having our pedestrian road go across here, I'm going to grab a regular road, send that straight back here. I'll need to use Anarchy for this. It's going to be very upset with what I'm doing. We'll send it way back here and then use Move It, holding M, then Alt. Pull this back a little ways. Control H this down. I think you start to see the method of the madness. Okay, and we're probably going to need to do something to modify this beyond just <laughs> what I've done. And I, you know what? I'm not even sold on this key wall. I think we're going to go call a mulligan on the key wall. I think it's going to cause more problems than it's worth. So now that we don't have the key wall, I'm going to pull this back a bit further and I'll add a node here so that we can add a cul-de-sac bulb. Okay, and now I'm going to grab this museum and pull it back and then raise it up. It's line up nicely with this. And I love the path, so we're going to keep the path, although I might pull it closer. There we go. So we've got our path around there. Totally unnecessary, but just kind of a nice amenity for the community. The ability to come and run and uh, those things of those nature along the coast would be greatly appreciated by all residents here, I am certain. And then we're going to add in this ferry stop. The way that we're going to handle this, there are a couple of ways. We could unlock this road, grab this, and just place this along here. But as I'm thinking more and more about this, if we were to do that, we lose a couple of things. The main thing is the ability to have parking, which I do think, you know, there are going to be some folks that say, why would you have parking here? Let people take transit. You're right next to this transit up. I get it, but I'm also a pragmatist. I know that people like to drive places uh, like this or at the minimum short term parking. So uh, sometimes you've got to take your idealism and check it at the door. And it's really hard, you know, especially as a planner to do that at times. And we've added two of these parking lots right here. This is not great. <laughs> you know, I think that we all know that, but, but here's the thing. It happens. That said, this isn't a terrible layout. We can hide some of this parking with landscaping. Let's add in our water pipes and get power over here. And there we go. Water and power in location. We should tidy this up just a bit with some landscaping. Now, if we aren't going to have key walls, I kind of want there to be some riprap around here. I, I, I don't have any assets for that specifically. So what we're going to do is grab our smallest stone axe at asset, the rocks, and I'm going to rotate these around and create something that I could clone and paste all along the, the, the water here. That should be good enough. We're going to move it, use our marquee tool, and then I just need prop selected and then I can control C this. And now I can rotate this around and just paste this all up and down the coast. And I think for the time being, I'm going to be pretty okay with this. This isn't bad. I'm going to line this with a little bit of landscaping to make it feel a bit more complete and potentially add a little road piece off from here. Now, the other thing I want to do, I'm seeing some cars parking along this road. That was never something I wanted. So we're gonna go into Unified UI and unlock this segment here. You can tell it's unlocked because it's yellow. It's kind of a warning, watch yourself. <laughs> and then we will use our picker to select this and then upgrade all of these Force, ah, oh, did it again. <laughs> Force all of these into the parking lot. I'm turning off collision momentarily. So I stop the nonsense. And then don't forget to lock these. Sometimes these will stop functioning if you don't relock them. So that is a problem. Okay, for this, I really want to improve this with some better landscaping. I don't know what that kind of bush that is around here. 
but this is evergreen and we have evergreens and you know I didn't I didn't think I could over evergreen it but I think this might be it so I think that you know where this is going when in doubt, the young linden will never fail you. And then let's finish off this path, at least to the end of this road. I don't think it would just terminate arbitrarily. It wouldn't be built, <laughs> more than likely, if that were the case. Tab this over. We'll make sure that that is lined up really nicely. Hit minus once. Enter there. Looking, you know, it's looking away. I do. I just want to check to make sure that these nodes connected. They did not. We'll manually adjust this control H this down into place and then I'm going to union these two nodes right here so that's coming in the, uh, into the unified UI network multi-tool union nodes mode and then we select both of these nodes and they'll become one now we did lose our young lindens but we know where to find them so again that boating history is really alive and well here and we're seeing that with our museum and we don't have beaches, but this will bring the coast to life here. And I really, really like that. But this is only half of the equation. And truthfully, I don't even know why people are parking here. What are you guys doing? You just getting on here to get on the bus? You use this as a park and ride? Maybe that's the game plan? I don't really know. Either way, we are going to need to have a terminus for this as well on Arquette Island. So <laughs> I need to leave that alone. <laughs> So this is Marquette Island. It is, it is a place with some terrain. This is going to be an excellent place to build. It's also going to be a very challenging place to build. We are going to start in this natural cove right here. To me, this makes sense. There would be fairy storage and there would be natural barriers around here. I can't really think of a better place. Maybe right here. But to me, this looks like where in the future you might have a cruise ship or maybe a cargo harbor. To begin, when this is planned and just being a small community, you've got beaches, you've got forests, you've got some flat building area right here, and then an area where you could potentially run a road along the coast to have some really scenic views, not a driving road, uh, either a bike path or a pedestrian road. So, and if, or we could, we could do a dirt road, but nothing that uh, cars can drive on. So let's think about our ferry here. So again, we go into our transport menu, ship, and here I think we're gonna use a ferry pier. Now, this is gonna be our first challenge. So I'll place this, and our challenge here is gonna be, what do we do with this road? I've tried to just eliminate the road. That doesn't work, but I think I have a couple of solutions. We need to get our ferry pathways established. So that is where we will begin. We'll come, whoa, I'm lost. <laughs> we'll come over here. We'll need to go into our info views, and now we've got to connect up our ferry path with our depot. So for this, I think we're going to pull this out right away. And I want to have this other connection made as well. So this is always dangerous. I'm using Anarchy, but we'll see if this works. Now we are going to make a connection with our ferry stop, and we're going to do something very similar. We'll come through here, loop this around. And we need to get this under the bridge, so that's going to be a, a, a really something that we have to consider. We're going to just connect these up right away as well. We're going to have a small ferry system. We don't need to have both of the to plan to have multiple ships coming in at once. We'll cross that bridge if we ever get there, and that is a terrible pun, and I should be ashamed, but I'm not. <laughs> so, and then I am going to send this back around this way as well. So now we could see the depot providing ferries either to this stop over here or directly to Marquette Island. So I want to turn off Anarchy just for a moment. We have collision off as well. Super dangerous when you're making these. Uh, I have on a number of occasions inadvertently created lines that looked like they were connecting but weren't actually connecting and as a result I had to troubleshoot for a long time to figure out the problem problem was just that I didn't use collision I didn't have collision on and as a result I couldn't tell that there wasn't a connection somewhere so always be leery of that there we go got that made and now we need to draw our route and this is really the moment of truth where we make our connection here and see if it actually accepts it so we place a stop here on the island come back over here and it did make a connection that is incredibly positive we'll complete the line 
And wow, look at all of the fairies it's going to throw at this. Let's look at our line details and we can see it wants to throw seven vehicles at this. There's not even anything to go to. <laughs> so let's drop this down to one. We don't need to pay an arm and a leg for this. We will increase the number of fairies as we need them. To me, that makes a lot of sense. And I just want to see for a moment <laughs> how this actually looks as it's coming in. That is pretty darn good. I wish that this was a little bit lower, but I know that if I lower it at all, we're going to run into some issues. Yeah, it's probably not worth it. I'll just let it go, and this will be a little spot where you've got to forgive a bit of imperfection, but I think it's fine. So over here, I'm going to start out, and we're going to draw a little community with some dirt roads. And we need to have our contours on here. This is going to be a very challenging place to work in and build anything substantial, which is fine. We're going to let the, con the, the terrain really dictate what we're able to build here. And we're going to follow the coast a lot. So I want this to be mostly squared up to maximize the number of lots we can fit in here. This is going to be very valuable at some point down the line. So let's maximize our buildable lots. And the folks building this are not rich. Maybe Russ is doing okay. But I wouldn't think that Ben Begay, though he has been a CEO of a successful company for a while, he is not the wealthiest guy in the world. So he needs this to pencil out. So this right here is going to kind of be the core of our downtown area. And I'm deleting that because I want to find the center. So I look through here, it's 15 units. So we know that roughly here will be the center. It's eight units over there and seven over here. So that's pretty good. And then we need our utilities here and I could place them back here but I think we're gonna start planning for the future so the way that we're gonna do that is to start planning a little bit of a roadway network through here and we're gonna continue to use our dirt roads and we're gonna I have anarchy on we're gonna come through afterwards and remove the trees in this area and where we're going is over here so I don't want to use this area because if we ever want an airport here, this is kind of it. This is another area that maybe uh, it's kind of treacherous, but we could have a nice place for some of our utility buildings. And that's really what I'm gearing towards. So we'll have a nice coastal road getting there. It's going to be long, but this is going to be a pedestrian district and we need to have this. So we're going to quietly build along the coast for just a minute. and We'll be right back. Okay, so we've made it all the way back here, and now it's time to work our way up here. This is an interesting spot. Very, very sloped, but we're coming in at an angle where I think we could have some relatively gentle contours at the very end of this. So I am going to cut through here a bit, because we're kind of dropping down into a bowl. So what I could see happening would be some of this terrain being shifted around a bit. And then we'll fill in some of these areas. There we go. So now we can run our road through here. So here is going to be where the majority of our utilities are. I don't love the angle of this, and I do want to check a couple of other things. So I'm going to use our arrange it line mode and try to straighten this out just a little bit. It's a little bit nicer. And then we will also check our slopes here. We can improve that a bit. That's a little bit better. So there, these will be some of the few heavy vehicles in the community are garbage trucks. They will need to access at least at a bare minimum. I believe they're going to need to access the harbor. <laughs> that is quite the trek. But uh, that is what we're looking at in the island. Island life will be wonderful. But at the same time, it's going to be hard. So that's the sort of thing you experience in a place like this. We are close to civilization, but just a little bit cut off. Now, it's funny. I went to this uh, this place called Stouts Island a few years back. Uh, it was a nice vacation spot, and he had to take a boat to get there. And even though, I mean, this is a, a little lake up north near Spooner, Wisconsin, even though, you know, it's a little tiny lake and it's just a couple minutes to get across, it really made you think about every single trip that you made. You had to be very intentional about it, and you had to really plan. The only place to get food on the island was this little restaurant that was fairly expensive and we were very very broke at the time just having a baby and going on a vacation that you know maybe we shouldn't have <laughs> 
but that really made us think like we had to when we were going to the store to get materials for cooking we had to make sure we had everything you couldn't just go back and and, and figure things out on this island that's going to be the situation that is going to be the situation that everyone deals with when they are going shopping they might be going for the week or they have to walk with just what they can carry you can't take your big car to costco it's, it's going to be a different sort of situation and i think that's lovely i think that's wonderful all right, let's get our required utility buildings here. We're going to start out with just a recycling center. And I love the idea of this. We'll see if this suits our needs in the long term. I'm guessing it won't. <laughs> and then the other thing that we need back here are some of our service points. So we are going to create a small pedestrian service point. And you might wonder why I'm placing this back here and not near a little community. That's because we have to. We can't place this on a pedestrian road. We're going to have all pedestrian roads over there. The other thing I'm realizing is we're not going to have any goods here unless we start making accommodations for that right now. We've got a couple of options and the one I'm going to, I'm going to go with might not be the most popular, but I think it's the right one. I think we're going to plan an airport over here. We built an airport in the previous episode, a general aviation airport. This time we're going to build a cargo airport so we can actually get goods here. So I'm going to go ahead and make an airports district again. This is the easiest way to level, remove all the trees. And where we're going to place this, I want to reserve this for an actual airport if we build one. This right here is flat-ish, and I think we could fix it. <laughs> so this will be a very expensive airport, but we're going to build it anyway. So this contour height right here seems to be a good compromise, or maybe we could push this hill down and fill in this area right here, but not need to completely figure out what we're doing with all of this soil. And on this island, that would be a critical concern. We don't want to have to bring Phil to the island at all. And then I'm just going to remove the district. And these districts are funny. They leave trees behind, but we're in a much better spot than we were in. So I'm not going to complain. And there are two routes that we could go, uh, theoretically. <laughs> we actually only have one option right now but you might be thinking just build a nice big cargo airport i don't have those unlocked so i can't so our route that we could pursue is actually building one of our cargo airports from the industries dlc and that's exactly what we're going to do so this has to be placed on a roadside so again another reason why we have to have a road and i'll place that right here and then i'm going to use move it to really figure out what i'm doing and I want the runway to be bigger than this. Again, we're going to customize our runways. This is what I would like to do. That means that I've got to cut this down a bit and move our fill. Then I'm guessing if I try to raise this to the terrain height, it's going to get all wonky. Actually, it's not too bad. Turn on the contours and I'll be able to see everything perfectly. Let's get rid of some trees here. And then we'll finish the job. So that is looking all right, but we could do a lot better. And the way that we're going to do better is going into our airport runway. It's not going to be functional, but I don't really care. But we could add on to this one using just our general airport runway. Now, the reason why we're doing that is you got to remember that this is part of the industries DLC, not Sunset Harbor DLC. So just tacking these on here. And then I'm making sure that we have a clear path for landing. Extend that out a little bit further. And then I want to lower this down for whatever reason. Right here it was elevated just a bit. Now I feel like we're in a good place. So I did read in the comments that all of these airports should have some sort of fencing around it. I think we're going to uh, save some of our airport detailing for a stream. I had a blast in the last stream that we had for this series. And I'm eager to do another one. So I, I think that that's something that that uh, that we'll do to handle the airports for the time being. Let's just get this working. So I'm going to right mouse click up here because we want to slope the terrain to have a little bit smoother of a path to get up here. And then again, we'll pull this down. And we're really lucky that this this little community is generating a ton of money because <laughs> we would be in a really rough place if we were still kind of drowning in debt like we were for for quite some time. Okay, so I've, I've meandered this around our terrain. Obviously, we could just bend the terrain to our will, but we've already done a lot of that. So 
why do we want to keep doing that we, when we could play the game a little bit in terms of our or in terms of our terrain now here we are going to modify our slopes to try to make them a little bit better got some tens there we've got we're gonna have trucks heavy trucks coming off here oh i hate that <laughs> i really hate that there's my mulligan we're gonna deal with our steep slopes here it'll be fine i guess <laughs> we're, we're gonna call it fine and what i think we're gonna do is use a transformer for the time being we'll do the exact same thing downtown it's not the perfect solution but it's gonna work for for now in the future i think we need to have some clean sources of energy maybe another another wind farm but that is another build for another day let's get our water pipes from here over to the, the city okay so we have that set up water pipes underneath the road there and we need to get power up here so i'm gonna run a power line over to this airport over here and we'll go with our rural line and then we'll cut the trees back near that power line and now we need to get water and i'm thinking that we are just going to add in a small pumping station for our water inlet and maybe have a water tower near the downtown area in the future so i'm going to add a water pump right here so we're pumping the ground water out of the aquifer for our treatment plant, I think we're going to go with our inland water treatment plant. It's not the cleanest, it's not the greenest, but it is incredibly inexpensive and has a large capacity. All of that said, we've got to keep that away from this. We'll hide that back here, and then we'll run this along here and meet up with the road where we can. And this is one that we can't leave <laughs> the slope as it is. That's going to be like a 30% slope. Okay, 21 not quite as bad as I was thinking, but we could take that down to a six. That is considerably better. Now we can turn our contours off and get our last water pipes going. Okay, and with that, we have everything that we need. We are an operational little community back here. So we've got garbage. They're taking this into their little pedestrian spawn point. They're picking it up, going back and forth. So we're gonna take this little pedestrian area and extend it out. and. You gotta remember, as much as I would love to take this thing and cover the entire island, if we do that, it's gonna tank our budget. We're already in kind of a precarious spot. I know that the more infrastructure we build here, the, the tougher it's gonna get. We need to start making money. I'm gonna pull this over here. I'm gonna pause it, and you know I don't like doing that. We're gonna pull this over here and then sever this. We don't want this to be any bigger than it has to be. So one other thing I want here is I want some sort of storage for goods. I don't know that we're actually going to see a ton of activity and traction here just yet, but I think it's going to be important that we have a place to store goods down the line. So I'm going to run that back here. And we'll have an enclosed facility and we're going to set the stored resource to commercial goods and we're going to set this to fill. My goal would be, and I don't know if this is a realistic one, I would love for flights to start coming in and loading up this. Let's also add some landscaping. And to me, this is a nice demonstration that we really bent this area to our will. So this is not a natural area in any particular way. We've dug this out and made this uh, thing what it is. All right, so we've got our cargo airport, we've got our facilities, now we need to build our little city. We can now add in some of our pedestrian roads and we're gonna absolutely do that. Now, I want you guys to leave a note in the comment about the type of pedestrian streets that we should use. I think I'm gonna start out with the cobblestone streets. It feels like a solid choice for an area like this, but let me know. So these are our options. And I think that you can make a case for any of them. So let me know which one you think is best. And for the time being, we're just going to go with the, the, the first one that I that caught my eye. We'll go with the cobbles. And I'm going to run that to here. And then we need to clean up this road along here. We've got a lot of trees that are they're overlapping. Okay, and that should cover it. I think that we've got all of these 
roads straightened out now. So the one thing I really want to be certain about is that we do not have any vehicular traffic heading this way outside of our emergency response vehicles. It may be a trash vehicle. Like I mentioned, we might need the odd trash vehicle to reach the harbor. So we're going to go into TMPE. First thing we'll do is we'll get rid of parking. And then I want to go into the vehicle restrictions. We're going to come here and I'm going to hold just like I did with parking. I'm going to hold down shift so I can apply this to the entire roadway. I do not want any passenger vehicles, any transit vehicles, any taxis. Now I know those are all within my control, but I don't want them. And then I also don't want any cargo vehicles. So we're allowing emergency response vehicles and garbage. And that is it. And that is up to here. And within this area, drive all you want till your heart's content. Look at this. We've got donut trucks donating around, doing their donut thing. That's fine. Deliver it right here, and then you're done. You cannot go into the community. That is not okay. Now, in the future, I might do something like they have in Mackinac Island, uh, which is what this build is based upon. And I actually recently watched this video where Amazon shows how they deliver packages on Mackinac Island. And it's on this horse-drawn carriage, which is really fascinating. And it's something that we could bring into this build too. Now on Mackinac Island, there are a few motor vehicles that are allowed, a couple of fire trucks, an ambulance, a couple of police cruisers, and then some public works vehicles, but that's it. No private vehicles. So very, very interesting place. So we've got the same situation right here. We're going to need to take this dirt road and run it over to this location. That will be a final step for us. For now, I'm going to show you where our pain point is going to be. So let's go into our unified UI and we're going to unlock this segment of road right here. And I'll use the picker to upgrade this. And as soon as I do that, this thing's going to get very unhappy or it won't. It's not going to care. And I'm going to love it for that. Okay. Well, maybe it's going to let us get away with one. I don't believe it. I think it's going to get real mad down the line. Let's add power here and really test this out. And while we're waiting, we've got our pedestrian district, but I want to district out the entire island so that we know what this place is. And this is also going to be helpful because we're going to set a theme here. Okay, and we have Marquette Island, and I absolutely love this. Uh, they're calling this Washington Avenue. That's kind of funny. We'll make this Marquette downtown. So we can now set a theme. And I went through all of the default themes, and unless I want to plop every single building, I think that the European suburbia theme is going to be the best one for us to implement here. It's the theme that seems to have the fewest uh, carports and garages and just generally car centric architecture. So that's what we're going to go with. It also will eliminate uh, some of the university cities buildings from spawning in and they look pretty terrible <laughs> if we're just being completely honest. So now that we have this ooh, crime and that's what I was worried about, you see, it says there's no access to this facility. They must have adequate access by a motor vehicle. We are going to need to come up with some accommodations to make the game less mad. Now I could cheese this, but I think we're going to still have a garbage problem. We'll test it though. So cheesing this is grabbing this, making a two unit road segment. Pull that right here. And I'll drop it down just beneath this. And look at it, it's happy now. It doesn't like the crime, but outside of that, everything's just fine. So let's get building. This is going to be our downtown area and where we focus most of our city service buildings. And that is where I want to begin. Obviously, it's a little weird to plan out the health care of your community first, but I do think that it's where we're going to start here. What we're going to use a lot of some of our seaside resorts buildings. It's not going to work here necessarily. So we are going to have some auto centric buildings with parking stalls. It stinks. There's nothing I can do about it. So we'll just have to forgive this a little bit here, but we are going to be fairly conscientious about that with everything else. We're going to add a library as well, a historic library, and we're going to make that the focal point of the downtown area. You can't build on water, so we'll have to extend this out a little ways.
And this is a really important building because for a while we're not going to have any schools here. So this will be the way that we educate our Sims on the island. Eventually we are going to add in schools. I expect some kind of wonky behavior though. So we're going to need to really think about how we do that. My fear is that the game is going to just divide up our school aged populations and say that there's a bunch of kids taking a ferry to get to high school, which I mean, that would be very interesting, but I just don't know that it's the best solution for us. We'll place a transformer right there. That'll serve these facilities. And then we're also going to need a police and fire department. And again, this is another situation where we're going to use some of these historic buildings. And there we go. Now, I think it looks a little weird to have these things just plopped on the grass. So we are going to add some asphalt as well. We do have our concrete. And if we go for our two by two, we should be able to just plop a couple of these in place. Make it look a little bit better. So these are our core city services that we're going to need to get things moving. And I'm going to add in some housing now. That's our biggest demand in the entire region. And it's what this area needs to get going before we ever think about a single employment building. So we're going to go fairly dense through here. I'm going to leave one gap in between. We're going to do a bunch of two by twos. And it doesn't look like we could put another row of housing up here. So I'm going to just keep it nice and close. And then we'll do the same thing down here. We'll go with a couple of three by threes. And then I'm going to be careful here because we may need to provide an access up here. That would be a very costly access, but maybe a tunnel through here to get to the other side. And we've got our first residents moving in. I'm going to speed this along because we're going to have some issues. Okay, so you can see that we've got housing showing up all the way along here. And that's exciting, but I'm not sure that there's actually anyone that lives here. Let's pause this for a second and see what this ferry just did. Zero people there. Zero people have used this. And I'm guessing if I click all the way down the homes, zero people in all of these. <laughs> so <laughs> we have built lots of homes. These are spec homes, uh, speculatory homes. And we are trying to see if we can get people to move to the island. It's a tough sell. There's nothing here right now besides a couple homes with some absolutely extraordinary views. You can see that we've got a little lighthouse out here. Would be wonderful, but, but what do you do here? I guess you go to the library and that's about it. <laughs> we don't even have a cemetery here. So I mentioned that we potentially add in some sort of way to access this area back here. I think we need a cemetery and this is where we're gonna put it. I'm very curious, I've never tried this. But I want to see if we can add a tunnel with our pedestrian roads. I don't see why we couldn't, except that we can't. <laughs> so, so this is going to be an instance where we have to add in some normal roads. So we're going to add in a two lane road with sidewalks. We'll add a tunnel here. And it's kind of a weird solution because we aren't going to have a tunnel anywhere else. I really don't know that I love the way that this is lining up anyway. Yeah, we'll skip the tunnel. It didn't work. It's going to cause us to deviate too much from our plans. But we do need death care here. That is the last thing that we're missing. We are going to just add in a dirt road going up here. And you can see that there's a path, a viable path over here. Okay, so we've got this all set up. It's within close enough proximity. I could also see that downtown, but we just don't really have very much space down here. So the last thing we want to do is have a bad land use, like a cemetery in the middle of our downtown. Now, I know it happens. We've all been to a small, uh, small town where the cemetery is the heart of the city and it's used for activities, but we're not going to do that. We're planning this right now. And I don't think in a million years, that Ben or Russ would be down for that. Now, this is awesome. We've got our first citizens and I am very excited about it. 
So we got one here, one, two young adults here, two young adults here, couple here. Very, very good. So our total population of our island at this point, 29. <laughs> <laughs> it's not not very good but we're, we're gonna be fine with that I do think that we can add in a few commercial buildings and I'm upgrading these since we added to the coast I just want to make sure that we have all of our squares available we're gonna go very tight down here and I almost want to create one of the little wall-to-wall -wall districts down here I'm gonna hold myself back from doing so but I'm, I'm I, I will tell you that I'm very tempted and then through here, I'm gonna add a park fence just to control our zoning a bit. And then again, our upgrade trick, and we'll again place our buildings back here. So we are gonna to need to be very careful with the buildings that spawn. Things like this are fine, and I might just take some of them and make them historical. Same thing with this. I actually love this. I don't love the billboards, but I love that there is seating here. That feels like something that you might see. This garbage right in the back, probably not so much. And then this, a drive through that backwater burger. A little force an upgrade there, maybe a downgrade. And honestly, the pancake place is a better fit. Make that historical as well. Now, if there's ever a place that's useless on this island, <laughs> the foul oil. Someone didn't tell you about this place. <laughs> so sometimes you can upgrade and downgrade and find a, an asset that doesn't have Parking, in some cases you just can't. It's fine. And we could play a bit of whack-a-mole if we really care. Truthfully, we are probably gonna need to calm down on our commercial. There's a huge demand for it. So it's really difficult to hold back from adding it. But look at this. Right away, we have a bunch of worker problems on the island. And this is 100% attributable to the, to the empty homes. And then the other thing is that we might have an education mis mismatch here. So I think for some of this, we're just going to have to, to wait. I do want to do one more thing though. And right off the bat, I want to be thinking about the aesthetics of this community. That is going to be a huge concern for both Ben and Russ for different but similar reasons. So Russ is concerned. He knows that for this place to sell with as few amenities as it currently has, it must be incredibly beautiful. For Ben, his concern is that this is the most beautiful place in the county and he wants it to remain the most beautiful place. So they might have different rationale for coming to where they're coming to, but they have the same goal, which is to make this place attractive. So we are going to add in some seawalls along here that make some sense, provide some pedestrian accessibility and are attractive. I think we're gonna go with these these wide walls for the time being. We might upgrade these or downgrade these. I think it'd be really nice to be able to watch the fairies come in though. And then I'm stepping this out far enough that we should be able to add a path. Now it's tough because this is backwards, so I can't really tell if this is in a good place. We're gonna enter it here and then we go through and we use our invert segment mode to reverse the backwards segments. I think we actually did a pretty good job. Yeah, that's pretty good because we're gonna add in a pedestrian connection. So this entire place, again, as a pedestrianized area, must be very pedestrian friendly everywhere. It should be the very first and the last thing we think about no matter what we're doing. So this isn't quite where I want it to be. And now here's where we get to play with the fun of water mechanics. And that is we are gonna find our nodes here, hold alt and pull these back to try to line up or do that, which is terribly broken. And then I'm gonna control H the height down to match with our roads. And over here, we don't have as much of a reason to be concerned just yet. So we won't be. I'm going to back this out a little ways. We'll add in some specific connections. This gives us a little bit of room to landscape. And I like that, the idea of that. Okay, so now I just want to take a look 
add a couple more of these nodes just to see that we're straight because it looks like we've got one right here for instance that got a little off kilter there we go it looks pretty good and we're gonna let this thing go again because we can folks will eventually walk around here it's gonna look really nice but for the time being we're just gonna have a struggle and some of these will have to reset I love some of these buildings so I'm gonna set the ones that I really like to be historical and we will consequences be damned we'll come back and fix it later <laughs> we'll, we'll have to just wait until this fills in this is going to slowly fill in the whole community will but it's going to take some time we have one more thing that i think we should probably do right off the bat uh, just thinking about our town to increase the population growth and that is we could add in a child health center and elder care right off the bat and i think that would be a wise way to go elder care helping people live longer and child health care getting more births so we'll call a mulligan on those houses and place this right about here and for our elder care we might add on to the community a little bit and we'll head up this way and this time we are definitely respecting our elders giving them an excellent view of the water and quick access to the ferry should they need it There we go. So this will change our roadway layout down the line, but I think this is going to be really helpful for us in maintaining uh, our community's population. So I want to see where we're at in terms of population. We're now at almost 100. <laughs> we did have a death. So now we're down to 88, not 89. And we've had some interesting things happening here too. Oh, the hearses are trying to leave the island and they can't. I love that. <laughs> All right. I think that this is the perfect time to slow things down, take inventory of what we've done, and have a brief city tour. All right, and that was a nice city tour. I want to take a look at one thing, though. So we've got this Pancakes International. It's abandoned, whatever. But look at, there's no parking anywhere on this asset. Now, if we come over here, I'd notice that we've got another one, and this one has parking at the front. It's fascinating to me. We obviously shouldn't give up on an asset if we really like it. We should look for a variation. This wine and liquor, for instance, I, I believe that there is a version of this that does not have parking. So... I'm going to be on the lookout for that. I also wanted to zoom over here and see what we're looking at for passengers. It's saying that at our ferry pier, we have no passengers that have ever been here, which is obviously not true. Let's take a look at our transport menu and we'll look at our ferries. And we've got one person, <laughs> just one. And this is this person is way back in Evergreen and apparently... They're the one person that wants to get to Marquette Island. <laughs> Not exactly a happening and happen in place just yet, but I have no doubt that in the future this is going to be an absolutely fantastic place. A couple more things I want to check out. Look at our land values and look at that. It's already starting to creep up. We could absolutely implement some policies. We do have a focus now. It's a residential area. We could slow down driving, ban sugar, have street music, deliver everything, whatever we want to do. I do think that we are going to have deliver everything as a policy and see if that maybe resolves our issues with garbage that I just feel like we're going to have over here. I also want to look over here to see if we have loaded this up with cargo and we have. So I feel pretty good about that. So we are not going to run out of goods at our commercial locations in our downtown area. If we run out of anything, it's going to be people to work at the stores. So I think that we have done a lot today, and I think that we're going to leave it here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. It's truly a privilege to bring these videos to you, and I appreciate your company. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.